and welcome to this episode of The Mitchell File. I'm your host, Roosevelt Mitchell III. So I was listening to the radio earlier today, and the radio host and his guest was talking about this high-profile case that occurred in St. Louis just a few weeks ago. This lady right here, Deborah Pierce, she's an ex-professor at Webster University who embezzled $375,000 embezzled $375,000 from an institute at the university. So, and the reason why the case is so big is because the judge, the district court judge, gave her probation and ordered her to write a journal, right? And how it went down is she created a separate account, uh, a secret account, and was putting money in that account and using it for family and friends and her travel and personal things and stuff like that. And the total is $375,000, but they found the account with $160,000 in it, which is not added to the three seventy-five. dollars So that was over a half a million dollars that she had access to, but she did not have time to spend the other one hundred and sixty dollars or take it out. So they just charged her with the three seventy-five. dollars But the kicker, the kicker is the judge asked her in court, how long should you go to prison? The prosecution recommended 18 months. Your own lawyer asked me for 12 months for you to do a year in jail. And the sentencing guidelines is two years. So he could have sentenced her to up to two years. Instead, he gave her a probation and told her to write a journal detailing what she done and why she did it. So he can use the journal to show the gang offenders, and the drug dealers in court. And this is what the radio host was upset about. He was like, there's brothers and sisters on the street who's getting a whole lot of prison time for a lot less. She stole $375,000 and stood in court and said, I don't have the money to even pay the school back. So she has to figure out how to pay the money back. Right? And again, there's brothers out here who's selling ten dollars twenty dollars worth of drugs on a street corner and getting five ten fifteen twenty years so one of the guests on the radio show stated well it can't be race because the district court judge who gave her this sentence is black and this is him judge Autry and I find that interesting because people like to separate racism and color from institutional racism Right, you can still have a person of color, i.e. Clarence Thomas, i.e. this judge, right? You still can have a person of color in a position, but you still can have institutional racism because they had a guest on the show who was, uh, I think he was a, a house representative. This same judge gave him 18 months in prison for stealing $2,500. He was a politician. He cashed a check, $2,500. It was against the rules. He broke the law uh, 18 months in jail. He did 18 months in prison. But yet this woman, for stealing $375,000, she only get probation and to write a journal. Right? So, you know, we have to be careful how we uh, talk about racism in today's society. It's not just because a person is, is white that, it, you know, or a person is black. I mean, look at the guidelines, too. The judge could only give her two years. She could only get 24 months for stealing almost 400 grand. Right? But again, you get caught with drugs, you you gone for a long time. Or better yet, uh, the woman in Texas just the other day, she got sentenced to five years. This woman, she got sentenced to five years in prison because she voted while she was on probation. She didn't know that she couldn't vote while she was on probation, so she voted in the 2016 election, and they just gave her five years this past week. Right? So the sentencing guidelines for white-collar crimes and other kind of crimes is a huge disparity. It's a huge disparity. So when we talk about racism and institutional racism, you know, we have to look at these uh, sentencing guidelines. But I would love to hear what you think about this, so please leave a comment in the section below. Until next time, my friends, be blessed and be encouraged.